Hi, I'm Dave, this is Dave's Weird Project. Today, I'm doing the biggest miniature I've ever done. Let's check it out. This dragon came in several parts. So here I'm dry fitting them together to just see what I'm working with. I've always been pretty fascinated by dragons. They occupy so many roles in our stories. Sometimes they're beasts, sometimes they're intelligent, sometimes they're villainous, sometimes wise and caring. Here I'm cleaning up mold lines. First I was doing it with the X-Acto knife and it was kind of a pain and I thought, oh my gosh, I gotta do the whole dragon this way. And then I started trying using um, 1000 grit sandpaper. That's something I picked up listening to the Trapped Under Plastic podcast, which is pretty good. It's John and Scott the Miniature Maniac. They do it, I think, every two weeks. And they talk about a lot of different topics. But anyway, the sandpaper worked out really well. Uh, it took the mold lines off really easy. I was able to get into lots of little cracks with it. Here I'm trying the baking soda trick with uh, super glue. I used it last video with the death claw. But here it clumped up and made kind of a big lump. I don't know if I just added too much baking soda at once or what, but I decided to kind of dig it out with the X-Acto knife uh, rather than uh, try to stick with it. I think it's probably the right decision. And in the end, the gaps are actually not that noticeable, so I think it worked out okay. But yeah, so sometimes dragons are beasts. Sometimes they're intelligent, like I think the Game of Thrones dragons are more like animals. But then dragons in D&D are a lot more like, you know, actual characters with intelligence and speaking and everything. Here I'm doing the underpainting. First I dry brush down with a white color, a skeleton bone. And then I'm going into all of the little cracks under each scale with a black wash. This ended up working really well on this model. The whole guy's gonna be blue, but I wanted the parts under the wings and the belly to sort of be a little bit different tone. So I'm actually starting with this Cayman Green from Vallejo and gonna paint those parts with that. Maybe really just one layer, but thin. And then I'm gonna go over it with blue later. Skyrim dragons are an interesting mix from the video game Skyrim. They're supposed to all be intelligent, but the ones you kind of encounter in the wild just act like, you know, wild animals, basically. Like, not much different from the bears and wolves you fight. They just come at you. This is Oceanic Blue from Reaper. Going on at this with a thin down, almost glazed consistency. And I did the whole thing, including over the green parts once they had dried. Here I'm kind of pointing out the underpainting results. It's a little hard to see here. I'm not super pleased with the lighting situation these days. I'm going to try something out, something out new soon. Uh, but anyway, I feel like it came well. Here's the blue going down over the green. And uh, my hand. This is amazing camera work. Got to work on that too. I recently moved the camera so that it's coming off the shelf to the side so it's not attached to the table. But that means it's on my right side, and I'm right-handed, so my right hand is flopping all around in the frame all the time. Coming over the belly with that blue here, and uh, I think the difference in hue is uh, ultimately pretty nice. It's a nice effect. They both look blue, but the, the belly and the under the wings ends up looking different and distinct. Here I'm coming in with a glaze consistency of a lighter blue. And I'm just coming at the edges of each scale, the the toward the where they overlap, and to do a highlight. And I actually almost kind of went at it as a textured technique too, just little dabs and straight lines. Here also coming over the raised parts of the wings where those bony, essentially their fingers, right, um, are going out, and the wing material is stretched between them. This is a mixture of a blue and black wash, homemade wash. Uh, just going over the whole thing, wings included, the green parts included. 
to darken up the cracks some more, deepen the blue. They work pretty well. I like using these homemade washes. They're fun. Uh, it feels like, you know, DIY. <laughs> and uh, they work pretty well, actually. And you get a lot more out of the materials than you would buying pre-made washes. The little bottles of ink you can kind of see in the background, they're a little bit expensive, but uh, it's worth it. They'll last basically forever. This is an even lighter blue, once again going at the edges of the scales with a glaze consistency and doing that kind of textured little strokes to make the edges look kind of, what's the word, chitinous, I guess. Um, like these are plates that have grown, almost like your fingernails sometimes get striations in them. Here I'm going at the claws with gray to uh, prepare them for the next color um, and kind of cover up any blue that splashed onto them. Also did the eyes and the teeth with this. And then the next step for these is a silver color, watered it down quite a bit uh, and applied it to the claws and also the eyes and the teeth. I like the idea that there's shiny, almost metallic parts to this dragon. Not that it maybe is real metal, but that he has this sheen to it. I think my favorite dragon thing is uh, Reign of Fire. It's a movie with Matthew McConaughey and Christian Bale. And uh, it's basically like a post-apocalyptic story where dragons popped out of the London underground one day and took over England. It's pretty fun. Gerard Butler's in it. So here I'm coming with uh, a little bit, tiny bit of red, a little tiny bit of yellow, and then a bunch of gray, and hitting all the rocks that, that the dragon's standing on. And then I added more red and yellow to kind of resaturate and just hit certain ones. Um, so that to make it look like there's variation but the overall hue is quite similar. So these are these are rocks that you could believe would be next to each other, even though they're buried in, in uh, value and saturation. I'm coming down with white, or no, actually just a very light gray. Dry brushing down over the edges of the rocks. Kind of tie them all together that way. And then a black wash. Uh, I put it on fairly thick, but then dab it off with paper towel so that only the stuff in the cracks remains and I don't darken the surfaces too much. This worked really well. I've seen a couple other people do it and decided to try it out. Here's some still shots with the macro lens, just trying to get a little bit closer view of the details. Here's the head with uh, eyes and teeth and uh, hopefully showing off some of the highlights where I tried to put them on the various features of the face. Here's the wing, hopefully showing some of the depth of shading that came because of the both the zenithal highlight and the washing and all the different layers of the blue. This is a leg. I felt like the highlights at the edges of the scales came through pretty well here. Uh, I'm not sure if the camera picked it up that great, though. The chest. Uh, again, the edge, edge highlights on the scales actually look... <laughs> Not that great when you zoom way in on them like this, but uh, from a distance they look okay. And they look better on the blue parts than the green parts. And here's a kind of a flank and the shoulder. Uh, really, I think, really highlights the, the work on the edge of the scales. I feel pretty good about that. The old blue dragon sits atop the crumbling remains of a once large human city. She was old when it was built. She watched with bemusement as they destroyed it in one of their pointless wars. What will come next? She does not know. She does not really care. She is timeless. Of one thing she is certain. They will return. They always do. They may rebuild. They may simply pick over the carcass for 
trinkets, riches. She will be there. She will watch. If necessary, she will intervene, but she doesn't think so. It's a beautiful morning. It's a good time to hunt. Why bother worrying over the past? Fretting over the future? Seize the present moment. Find a nice cow. Mm. So I'm really happy with that dragon, even though close up some of the details are a little goofy. I think the overall effect is really good. Uh, I mean, it's such a it's such a large thing that you know it's 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 meant to be taken as one big piece. I'm sure if you zoom way in on my face, there's goofy stuff. I'm sure if you zoom out on my face, there's goofy stuff. Before I get to the lessons learned, I'll do all the pleading real quick. Uh, if you like the video, please click that like button. Maybe consider subscribing and sharing. Uh, if you want to support the channel directly, there's a link to my book on Amazon uh, down in the comments. Comments? No, down in the whatever whatever happens down there. The description is down there. Yeah. Whew. All right, so lessons learned. I continued with the underpainting process that I learned from Dana Howell, and I think it really, really showed through here. It did a great job um, establishing highlights and shadows before any color went on at all. Um, and it stayed. I didn't have to do a lot of reinforcement later. Um, I think uh, the uh, Stan Broccoli beard, I had to do a little bit more because it was kind of my first time really trying serious underpainting. Um, this one worked out a lot better. Gluing together with the epoxy went well. Um, I kind of messed up when I was going to try to fill the gaps with the baking soda super glue solution. It ended up not mattering all that much. The finished painted thing hides the gaps pretty well, I think. The shadows that they create were well placed by whoever sculpted it and decided where the breaks were. Um, that said, I think if I had wanted it to work really well, I probably should have used a much thinner super glue, one that really gets down into the cracks and doesn't have a, a, a significant body to it. And possibly also much less baking soda at a time. Don't, I think maybe don't throw a big clump on there because the super glue is just gonna soak right up into that really fast dragon punch and uh, create a big blob. So maybe a little bit of super, uh, baking soda at a time just to build up thin layers of material. I think if there's one thing I'd like to do over or maybe just spend more time on if I was going to do it again would be those scale edge highlights. They do look good from a distance, but I feel like up close you can really tell that those are, yeah, those are discrete brush strokes. They kind of look like that sort of kindness um, edge, I don't know, I don't know what the word is, a striation. Uh, that I was going for, but they also just kind of look like paintbrush strokes. So I'm sure if I spent a little bit more time blending, doing some more glazing layers, very thin of course, but you know, going back and forth and back and forth, uh, that it could have come out better. So, you know, if I do another piece like this, very large piece, uh, I might try to spend some more time on that. That's going to wrap it up for this dragon. I had fun doing it. Uh, my next project, well, I'm starting on kind of a larger thing. I've been invited to take part in a challenge for December. Um, more about that later, probably when I actually publish the video. But because it is a little bit larger, my Monday videos are probably going to be a little bit shorter. Some smaller, quick deals that I can get out and still have plenty of time to work on that. So uh, I'm not sure how many of those are going to be. just depends on how long this larger project takes. But I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be fun. So anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Um, any suggestions you have for getting good blends on those uh, edges of the scales, things like that. Uh, any tips you have on that uh, baking soda super glue thing? I'd like to hear some more, um, you know, wisdom from the community on that. And uh, until next time, take care, everybody. Um, before I get to the next step, um, whatever I say next in these videos. Not sure why my hand is partially green. That's it's weird. Anyway.